Welcome back into the Far End of the Bench podcast, episode 76. Uh, and now that you guys are tuning in on our YouTube channel, Bola is rocking the cigar for the Joe Burrow Cigar Club as well as the New Stripe. So uh, Stripes, he's going to be making an appearance in all of our YouTube videos. If, Jim, if Jimmy can get the glasses too, we'll stick those on him. I, already, I don't make enough to buy Cartier <laughs> glasses. Yeah. What, what do you think I'm I saying? am? You know how much money we make off this podcast and I don't make enough to support the podcast. So I can't buy Cartier glasses. Uh, but I'll, I, I'll gladly have Bulla smoke a fake cigar for uh, the big win. But we're talking about some basketball before we went into the break, and that we haven't done in the NBA season its due diligence, mainly because, you know, the football playoffs and all, lot, everything yeah. like that. This is pretty much when basketball starts to actually matter. Uh, so for the NBA, it seems like the last two seasons especially, but this season we've, we've seen a ton of injuries, the Bulls were one of the hot teams in the East, and now with the injuries to Levine and to Caruso, we're starting to see them fall out of favor. What do you think, Like, do you have some sort of explanation as to why we're seeing the amount of injuries that we are in the NBA? Oh, man, I, I don't know, honestly. Like, last year, there was a, I also want to say there was more last year, Just and I, and I blame that because of the, the bubble and that whole thing. The timeline shift. The timeline shifting and everything. And maybe it's maybe it's trying to get legs underneath. But this year there's been I wanna say this year has been more of a young surgence. That's the best way to put it. There's a lot more younger players, younger teams have been doing so much better that playing good teams night in, night out, close games, it wears on you. Hmm. Like whether it be the jingles, um the Jingles injury, MCL terror now, and with the Veen being injured for half the games, and Vooch down there at the Chicago, and now the, the Heat have had Adebayo or, or Jimmy very fully healthy either, and they're still number one seed now in the East. Now the too. Lakers have been without LeBron for a little bit. Oh, the Lakers are, oh, the Lakers are the biggest shit show. That's cool. It's hilarious. That team, oh my god, that team is hilarious to watch. It's it's, it's great. It's great seeing that team downfall. It's cold as ice. It's, 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 it's beautiful to watch. But yeah, there's, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe it's still a bubble hangover. Maybe it's a season. They still got to try to figure it out. Maybe, but I don't know. There hasn't been a lot of season ending injuries. It's been more guys resting. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. More guys of, I'm not feeling too well. <laughs> Let's bliss this game out. Let's let's take a week off because I my knee is buckled a little bit. It's more of those load that, management. Yeah, load management type things, which probably you're gonna see a lot more of. Unfortunately, so the reason why I can't stand the NBA is the yeah. fact that load management is accepted and also, I mean, that in the tanking, it's just difficult to get behind. It's almost like ties in soccer. It just makes no sense to me. Uh, uh, I will give you that there have been a lot of young players like the the John Morant's. John Morant is on the season trajectory right now. He's mirroring what Joe Burrow did, if you want to compare him to a player in another sport, because the way his season ended, he was at a high, high level last year when he got injured. And now coming back and playing at that same level, maybe even better at some, at some he, certain he, points. He was badly banged up all last year, and then he got the Grizzlies – they went in and beat. Uh, they went into sorry, they, or they went into Golden State and beat the beat the Warriors for the last eight spot in the West last season. And Jaws, like that young team, is just playing very, very hungry and very, very talented and just basically grit and grind 2.0. Like, yeah. like it's not it's no longer the Zebos, Mike Conley, Marcus Souls. It's the Triple J, Jaron Jacksons, and, and, and the, the John Morants, Desmond Baines, and, and uh, Dylan Brooks of the world. Because all those dudes just come in, lunch pail guys, literally lunch pail guys, come in, get their job done, and they talk shit like no other two. And everybody's starting to hate it. And it's John Morant so good for the game. Like, jo and John Morant right now is what everyone thought Zion would be at this point. Zion has been so badly injured. Remember, Zion got the cover over John Morant. Exactly. And everyone thought Zion was going to be this dude. John Morant, what he's doing right now is what everyone thought Zion would be doing. They, he has them right now. They're two and a half games behind Golden State for the number two seed. Memphis is the number three seed. They did just lose to Philadelphia in overtime, 129-117, uh, as I'm looking at ESPN. But the real thing, like the way that you're describing it, they're kind of the team that doesn't understand – Similar yeah, to getting to the Bengals. Yeah. Like they don't understand that they shouldn't be there, so they're playing they over their head. Whatever, yeah. And they're do they're taking advantage of the success and I'd love to see like 
a guy like John Morant who went to uh, Murray State, I believe. Yeah, Murray State. He has one of the best stories you'll ever hear. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I mean, I've probably already said this before, but I'll go ahead and reiterate it again. He had zero offers coming out of high school. He was at this Murray State basketball camp mm -hmm. where they put him in the small gym. One of the recruiters, <laughs> let's go get popcorn, and, and had to walk by the small gym and stop to peek in and saw this kid jamming on everybody and basically ruining the gym. Gave him a walk on, earned a scholarship, became one of the best college basketball players in the country a few years back. Mm -hmm. Then becomes the number two world pick. The dude basically just goes out and wins and just just wears his heart on his sleeve. The best what the best person I can I can compare him to right now is Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose, not, not current Derrick Rose, I'm talking about Bulls Derrick Rose. How he has this high jump, he's got the, this insane jumping athleticism out, out, out the gym. Unreal. And, and he, he's got a decent jump shot, but he doesn't have that three-point shot down completely, but the guy just goes out there and makes plays with his, with his legs and with his athleticism and does it to a T. Mm -hmm. And what he's doing right now, like I saw him in person against the Nuggets, I want to say two weeks back, and man, when when he he is he's very smart too, because he is he's a tribute to the 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 Chris Paul type of thinking. When you're up by a lot, you dribble the ball. You, you dribble the ball out. You work the clock. If you if you take a shot within the first 15 seconds of the shot clock, it's it's a fail. And when you're up big on teams, you're up on teams. That's how you win good ball games. And he he is just doing things that that Memphis hasn't had since Conley and, and Zebo were there. And man, this Grizzlies team. I don't know how good they're going to be in the playoffs, but this team is fun to watch. It worries me a little bit looking at their differential. They're only at a plus 3.6, so they could stand to play a little bit better defense, especially in the playoffs when in the second and third rounds you're not having the home court advantage and you're going to go up. If you go deep into the playoffs this year, you're going to run into a Phoenix Suns team that's hungry. A Phoenix Suns team that seems like they took last year's loss in the finals and just got pissed off. They're taking it per everything personal. It's not everything personal. Nothing is nice. There's no fun in games right now for the Phoenix Suns. So if you're only playing defense at a plus three point six clip, when you've got a guy like John Morant who can just fucking score the basketball, that shows me that your defense is ready to play at the highest level. Exactly. And what this what this Suns team do? They are taking all of the disrespect. And I, I obviously I obviously take this too because the Jokic doesn't get expect, respect, and I just don't, blah, blah, blah. But the Suns, best record in basketball by like five games. They're the only team with single digit. Actually, they may have just hit their double digit losses. But ten losses on the season. And this team is just p coming out pummeling teams. They are taking names. Devin Booker is taking names. DeAndre Hayden is back to where he was. And, and this team didn't have an all-star starter. Talking about Chris Paul, talking about Andrew Wiggins, and talk, uh, no, not Andrew Wiggins, sorry, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and DeAndre Ayton, and the young guns there, and Miles, or not, or is it Miles or is it McHale? I don't know, whatever Bridges' brother is, is, is in, in. I'm pretty sure McHale is on Phoenix. Yeah, and Miles is in Charlotte. But, I could be totally off. Yeah, I, I, th I think that sounds right, but McHale has been absolutely perfect for them, Cam Johnson as well. And some seems, like I said, they're coming out for a vengeance, and they right now are. In my opinion, the team to beat because the Bucks have been faltering or 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 been, or been falling, and there's no more consistent team than the Bucks right now than the Phoenix Suns. That begs the question: On the Eastern <coughs> Conference side, I said that the Bulls started to struggle. They're they still are number one in the Eastern Conference. It's them, the Heat, the 76ers, all within half of a game. The Heat and Bulls are tied, and the Sixers are a half game behind them. Then K Cleveland is only a game behind that. So at the top four, you have such a log jam, and then Milwaukee, Brooklyn are your five six. That is a scary 5-6. It, it is, is like a scary 5-6. But how inflated then is the top of the East because your real teams that you're worried about in the playoffs are your 5-6 and six seed. I would even say maybe your 8-9 and nine because 8 is Toronto, 9 is Boston. I don't know necessarily. If Boston squeezes in too, I would almost take Boston over Chicago right now because Chicago's so raw. But Miami, that's the team that got swept by the Bucs in the first round last year. And... and I, maybe it's injuries. May, obviously, Brooklyn has injuries and a lot of other things going on. With Kyrie can only play in half the games. Kyrie can only play half the games. And James Harden doesn't like the strip clubs in Brooklyn, so he he's complaining about playing all in Brooklyn. that baby weight back too. For, so, for so Bro Brooklyn's got a lot of other things going on. Milwaukee has just not been healthy either, and they've just been struggling badly. But right now, I honestly could not tell you because of these. I would still say the Bucks. Cleveland is is a great story, but they're. <laughs> They're really, really young, yeah. super young. 
They have three seven-footers starting for the team. Uh, Marketing, uh, uh, Evan Mobley, who was one of the picks on USC last year, and then Jared Allen, all seven-footers starting for them. And they had two point guards starting with those three big men. And it is, it is unconventional basketball. No one knows how to guard it. <laughs> and that's why they're where they're at. And kudos to, to the staff over there in Cleveland because they know what they're doing and got the team in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But I don't trust Miami. Miami would scare me because of the P.J. Tucker factor and getting Kyle Lowry back. That makes them dangerous. And the fact they haven't played fully healthy makes them dangerous. But if Brooklyn or Milwaukee are fully healthy, I you can't shy away from either of those two teams. And what Philadelphia has still not been willing to trade Ben Simmons for, you are hindering your franchise. And Ben and sorry, not Ben Simmons. Joel Embiid is the second best player in basketball right now. He's not the best player, but he's the second best player in basketball right now. And he is just absolute on absolute tear. Mm -hmm. Get him some help, because if if you because the deal that they should have took was that Pistons trade where they got Jeremy Grant, where they got Sadiq Bay, two firsts and a young guy for Ben Simmons. And that's the best deal you're ever going to get, because you get wings, you can start Maxi at the point, and you have a lot of things open for you. And they just are unwilling to do that for. For a beat, and it is hindering the Sixers' chances at doing anything in the playoffs. The Simmons trade stock drop. In the oh, it is dropping the by the day. It is dropping by the second. Yeah. It is dropping by the minutes. They they are their asking price is way too damn high, and everybody is willing to say, "All right, we go ahead, pay him all that money, and don't don't play him, and see what happens to your team." Well, I mean, the dude is scared of a jump shot, especially <laughs> in the playoffs. So. It can't be on the floor, but I would say if the guy's that much of an issue, you should probably work harder to get rid of him. It doesn't seem like they're working all that hard to get rid of him. The, the, and and Daryl Morey, who, who was the GM in Houston, that got brought Jan, James Harden in and was is now the GM in uh, Philadelphia along with Elton Brand, a former player. Both those guys had the trade on the table with Houston before he went to the trade of Brooklyn for James Harden for Ben Simmons. And you said no because you trusted Ben Simmons. And now you are searching far and wide for something that looks similar to that so you don't look like an idiot. It's time to take your losses where you can and just get your team some help. Sometimes <laughs> admitting you were wrong is the first step to actually turning shit around. And the fact that you're still a three seed and doing what you're doing, it is based on the back of the greatness of Joel Embiid. But if you just get your ego out of the way, you could be the number one seed in the East and look at a very easy... First couple rounds of the playoffs, possibly. I will tell you, I could, I know what ESPN is hoping for. As it sits now, Charlotte is the seven, Toronto's the eight, Chicago's the one. They they want Chicago Boston. Well, they want Chicago Charlotte because oh, then you get the Ball Brothers in the playoffs. You're right, damn. I didn't think we about that. We could have Lamar yeah. on the sidelines. Yeah. yeah, I'm not thinking about that. Uh, I, I will I will argue and say that the uh, TNT gets the Easter Conference in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So TNT wants, ESPN okay. wants the Lakers versus the Suns the first I didn't realize playoffs. that there was even so. a difference between that. So, yeah, that, I've, like I said, I've watched more college basketball <laughs> this season than NBA basketball. I've watched more high school basketball it's than true. anything. Uh, um, it's, not the, it's not necessarily the great kind. Well, I, uh, I will give them a shout-out. They were on a seven-game Arvada West uh, PA announcing for them. Uh, if you care about Colorado high school basketball, they were on a seven-game winning streak. Uh, that did just come to an end recently. So, not having a terrible season. I've enjoyed it a lot. It's been a lot of fun. Um, other, uh, elsewhere in the world of basketball, the Nuggets, you said that we're going to get Murray back at the end of February. At, at max, or at, at latest, middle of March. It, what, what is that time period to where... Okay, here's, here's how I actually worry it. How much longer can Jokic carry around this sorry-ass roster before Jamal Murray gets back? How much longer are we going to get to that critical point to where Jokic can't do this anymore, Murray's recovery is not coming along like we think, we're thinking, and this team actually starts to lose the games that they should be losing? I I'm going to argue and say that we've passed that. We have passed that point because Malone, what he's been doing with these lineups, whether it be the addition of Boogie, the addition of putting Zeke Nagy into the lineup, who has been an absolute credible big off the bench. De DeMarcus Cousins has been great. You add the shooting of Brent Forbes, I think we're past that. We That little strip that, that everyone loves has not been playing the last two games, and Bones has been taking over the point position, which has been absolutely incredible and perfect for him. He's taken Long the time coming. Bones is Bones is rolling and Bones is keeping busy down there and I'm not because look 
Let's keep it a buck. When we get to the playoffs, basketball rotations get cut down to eight, maybe nine. That means your likes of Bones, um, um, uh, uh, Zeke, Jamaica Green may not get PT because when you get Jamal back, you get possibly get MPJ back, and, and you have those short lineups, you're not those guys are playing 35 minutes plus a game because that's what you do in the playoffs. So you just got to get into the right position. Right now, this other team is right where they want to be. Like I said, Dallas has been struggling too. That's a team that you just passed with for the fifth seed, and now Utah just lost an, or one of their big pieces in Jingles, Joe Ingles, in front of you with the fourth seed. You are in prime position to host another playoff series again and have the MVP get back on home court again in the playoffs. And then you bring in a guy that has his fresh legs, that looks like he's ready to come back, and MPJ is hungry again. This team is a team no one wants to talk about, but no one wants to face. Who is the more important piece, MPJ or Jamal Murray? It's Jamal 100%. Because Jamal, what he can do with the ball in his hands. MPJ more relies off what he can do without the ball in his hands. Getting open, whether it be open shots for Jokic or off the Jokic plays off of Jamal. But Jamal with the ball in his hands literally opens the floor for everybody. I mean, it, it is wild to think that I haven't watched Jokic play with Jamal Murray in over a year and a half almost. I mean, it, is, it, is, it is crazy to think it's been that long. And what those two do magically, they feed off each other. Whether it be the pit high pick and roll, whether it be the two-man game those two do. When Jamal Murray's on the floor, it's another shooter the defense has to worry about. When, when Jokic is on the floor, all attention goes to him. Jamal can get the one-on-ones that he wants. And it just makes the game so much easier for one another. Well, what would you say then to, if I'm one of these people that think back to the time where Murray and Jokic were playing, and Murray was not playing at that same level we saw from the bubble, having a little bit of a slower start to his season before he did have that injury, had a few really good performances going into it. Uh, what do you say to a guy that makes the argument, well, is Murray really going to help us out that much? Because the last time we saw him on the floor, he wasn't even to the highest level that he's been playing. And look, the high, the high standard of his playing, <laughs> what he did in the, the bubble. The fact that what he did in the bubble was just <laughs> out of it's just, yeah, He's it's, never going to reach that again. It's unconscious. Yeah. Not, many, not very many players in basketball will ever reach that type of peak. Okay, Very, many, you know. very few athletes in general have reached that kind if of If he can be level. three quarters of the player he was... Last season, then that is a far better upgrade than anything the Nuggets have. That because you know, you got to think Jamal Murray gets reinserted up to the starting lineup. What does that do to your bench? Monte Morris comes back to the bench. Austin Mark. Rivers never plays for the Denver Nuggets. Fuck, Basel never plays for the that, Denver. That as well. Austin Rivers is, plays very very well. No, I mean if, if Murray sure. never gets injured, yeah, Austin Rivers true. never plays for the Nuggets. That's true, but. I, I, I am really, really excited to see him back. Like I said, it's been a year since I've seen him play basketball, and I could not be more excited to see him back in this team with playing with the best player in basketball that's putting up godly numbers right now. Okay, so give me a scale 1 to 10 excitement level for the for said player to come back from injury. We'll start with MBJ. Lo- uh, 1 MP- to 10. Oh. <laughs> Nine and Jamal's a ten. Okay. Because because right now, if people weren't aware of what happened on Monday as we recorded this, Nuggets did pl- or sent for a designated player exception, which which means that or or I don't know if that's right. It's a TPE. I don't know what it's called, but it's it's uh basically if a guy's injured for the season, you can get money back for it because he's done for the season. He only played X amount of games. And that's what they took for. That's what they took for MPJ. And basically, it doesn't shut the guy down for the whole season. But what meaning is that he's basically going to be out to the playoffs, is what the meaning is. It's and the so, NBA's version of the long-term injured reserve. Exactly. So he, he and so he can, he, he there's there's no ruling out he may not come back, but there's a good shot he will, um, if this team makes a run. Hmm. I might as well take advantage of that. We've been having to see all these other teams take advantage. I know, of right? These yeah. Holes in the cap space. Denver finally takes advantage. No. Um, I think we're obviously going to start talking about. We'll have we were talking about it. We'll have a weekly uh, hockey basketball talk discussion because we haven't been giving it enough time that it deserves with football. Lots going on. of football. Yeah. Lots of football, and you know the Bengals in the, in the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl yeah. So next week, don't don't expect it next weekend, but the week after yeah. that, we'll have uh, we'll pick up on our basketball and uh, hockey. And baseball ever decides they're coming back, we'll start talking about some baseball too. We'll have a splash of baseball in there. Uh, as we continue on with this episode, but...